thank you all for attending tonight's virtual marketing mingle uh, for AMA Boston. Just a brief agenda, some guidelines to follow for tonight's event. Um, for the first 20 minutes, we'll be doing a Q&A session with Christina Garnett. Then we will open it up to our audience for some live discussion questions. And then for the remaining half hour, we will have breakout rooms and networking sessions. While we do our Q&A, please keep your mic muted unless you're given the opportunity to speak. If you have any questions you would like Christina, my apologies, error there, Christina to address, please add them in the chat. Please keep your cameras off until the networking portion of the event. This event is being recorded and will be available to watch on our YouTube channel shortly. And of course, feel free to take photos and share the event on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, using hashtag AMA Boston. For those who do not know who AMA Boston is, we are the Boston chapter of the American Market Association, the networking and educational hub for Massachusetts marketers. Our chapter was formed to accelerate marketers, to help them learn new skills, stay on top of trends and make next career moves much quicker, help business professionals get recognition from attending our exclusive programs, and have credibility and understanding how to make an impact through marketing, and also to connect and discover uh, through our virtual uh, marketing events such as tonight's workshops and fireside chats in person, eventually in person and virtual, which we are doing tonight and discover a sense of belonging and purpose. Get firsthand experience in all things marketing, live long learning and personal growth. If you're interested in becoming a member of our chapter, you can visit amaboston.org slash become a member to join today. And just a little bit of background on our pricing. If you're interested in becoming a professional or academic AMA Boston member, it's less than $13 a month. For students, it's less than $3 a month. And finally, group memberships. If you're looking to save a bit, it's less than $10 a month. Tonight, we have the fantastic Christina Garnett, community builder and strategist who uses audience intelligence and social learning to learn more about audiences, to determine needs, behaviors, and more. Her work serves to help brands better connect with their current customers, potential customers, and fans. Thank you so much for being here, Christina. Absolutely. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course. Yeah, we're very excited to, uh, to have you here tonight. Let me just uh, pull up my questions to start tonight off. So, Christina, you are a senior marketing manager at HubSpot and focus on building offline community and brand advocacy. How has community building and brand advocacy changed during the pandemic at HubSpot? Because I imagine there are more marketers than ever attending HubSpot Academy, learning new skill sets, sharing HubSpot content, and training themselves on the HubSpot CRM. Absolutely. COVID and everything that happened last year and the continuation of this year has definitely been a multiplier in our efforts for what our customers and partners need. As you may have guessed, HubSpot, because we're constantly optimizing and adding new features, it's almost impossible to be an expert at absolutely every single thing. And we're lucky that we really have this mindset for not only ourselves, but for our customers and partners to always be learning. And so the community currently is support focused, where you're able to go in, search for key topics, search for key questions that are being asked, and you're also able to get the answers that you need. That's fantastic but that's foundational. And so what I've been working with as well as the community team is really trying to figure out how can we provide a better user experience for our customers and our partners and be able to take care of the needs that they have. And depending on where you're located, what your needs are, what level of HubSpot you're using, which hub, your needs differ, but you all need a place to go. And so advocacy specifically has been a really great opportunity for us to acknowledge, identify, and celebrate the people who have been HubSpot fans for a day, for decades, they really wanna be appreciated and seen and they wanna get opportunities. So 
not only do community does the community work in a support focus, but now we're working on connection focused. If you've recently taken a HubSpot Academy course, you'll see that during some of the breaks, it will give you an opportunity to join a study group. Justin Champion has done a fantastic job of being able to take our community of Academy users and learners and be able to make that experience more lively and actually truly come to life because now you're able to have conversations with other users, other people who are in those courses. You're able to say like, hey, I love this and I've been thinking about doing this, an extension of what we've learned in this course. Does anyone have experience with that? Or does anyone have a framework that they've used that they've really liked? And so what it's done is it's created a fantastic extension for you to now apply and connect with others who have had that same educational experience. Additionally, we have advocate groups. So whether you're a part of our customer advisory board or you're a part of Hub Fans or Hub Fans Council or our community champions, we really strongly believe that there's no one way to be an advocate for HubSpot. It could be that you're a community champion. You love going into the community and you love helping people. You love showing somebody how to do this. Hey, here's a loom that, that answers your question and walks you through how to do this step. Or this is what I would do if I was in your situation. There's, there's multiple ways that you can be an advocate for HubSpot. And we we're very lucky because we have a very passionate and knowledgeable fan base. And so we don't really need them to do more. What we need is for me and for the community team to really kind of show that love back and to, and to showcase, we know what you need. We're listening. We're trying to make it a better experience for you. And for my part, my job daily is to make sure that they feel special, that they feel loved back. I love it. Always be learning. That is like the marketer's motto. When I uh, first got my, uh, my HubSpot certifications three years ago, there was maybe five or six of them. And now it's nearly tripled in size through the pandemic. And it's so great to see uh, from people who are studying digital marketing to sales professionals to CRM specialists. It's really blossomed, which is really great to see. Um, so HubSpot's annual business conference, Inbound, which I'm sure a few of us has, have uh, attended this year, was last month and had so many incredible speakers. During the conference, you launched a new program, Hub Fans, which you spoke about a little earlier. Can you briefly explain the program, how someone can get started and join, and what led you to create this new addition to HubSpot's growing community? Absolutely. So Hub Fans is very much a passion project. Um, basically it's very similar. If you've heard of hub stars in the past, we wanted to bring that back, but we wanted to do a really holistic point of view and really tie it into the community at large. So like I said, previously, there's not one way to be an advocate. So there's not one way to be a hub fan. So we have a gamified experience and then we also have a community experience. So if you go to our home, if you go to community.hubspot.com, at the very top in the header, you'll see um, a tab that says advocacy. And if you click on that, you will go to our gamified experience where you can gain points for completing challenges. And that can be everything from signing up to be a part of our reference pool. If you want to be contacted by people who are interested in buying, sale, um, buying um, talking to salespeople from us and they're interested in buying HubSpot, but they're really not sure. Um, that gets you an opportunity to speak with our sales team and be able to share your experience with HubSpot with prospective um, customers. It could also mean that you got a you got a um, certification recently and you want to be get an extra reward for that, or it could be that you want to attend a attend an event. You can RSVP for an event and get points that way. So they range anywhere from twenty points all the way to five hundred points for joining our reference pool. So depending on your availability, depending on your passion, and also what's important to you, you're able to really kind of pick your own adventure. That's been really important to me as I've been building this out is to make sure that everyone feels like they're not being put in one specific type of box. They're able to advocate in their way. You can share things on social. Some people don't like social. Some people will never have a Twitter and will hate it for the rest of their life. I don't want them to feel like they have to share things online in order to be seen as, as value to us. And so we're constantly looking for different challenges, and we're also looking to do international challenges in the future. So you'll see challenges that are in different languages next year. You'll see um, us really leaning into how can we make this a, a better experience for our advocates. Our top advocates are in the Hub Fans Council, and you can get that by being hand-selected because of 
you being like extremely vocal online or doing lots of events or just really kind of already showing your deep love of HubSpot. Or you can do it by gaining enough points through the gamified experience. And top advocates, top hub fans council, they get other opportunities. So we have exclusive events for them. We really want to create opportunities for them to have liquidity, as we say. HubSpot's fans have been with us for a very long time. They have all the swag. They have all the mugs. They have all the hoodies. They deserve better. They deserve more. And so we're constantly trying to figure out how can we have opportunities for them to learn? How can we have speaking opportunities for them? We have um, a list for them to be included if we need um, external speakers for a hug meeting or if we have something else coming up that we'd like to feature them. For inbound, we have inbound correspondence, which was a part of the uh, part of the HubFans Council experience, where those who were interested were able to get a free pass to, to inbound and were able to share their highlights. So we were able to see inbound from their eyes, from their perspective. And so they live tweeted, they created videos, they did content. And so it's a really great way to share the news about, about HubSpot and inbound. And if you were on Twitter and LinkedIn during those three days, it was absolutely nearly impossible to get through your feed without seeing inbound mentioned quite significantly. We had over 1200 pieces of content and, um, and post just from the correspondence. We also had the after hour show, which I created. It was a um, after hour show for about an hour um, every night of inbound. It was hosted by George B. Thomas. And he was able to do kind of what we can't do when we're not at the BCEC in Boston when inbound is in person, where you go to the bar and you grab a drink and you talk to somebody about their favorite sessions or what was their biggest takeaway or, or what, the, what can they not wait to implement when they get home. And so we did that um, through the after hour show. We broke down the sessions we love, the main takeaways. What, what would be the cliff notes for that session? What are you looking forward to um, tomorrow? And so things like that, what I'm trying to do with Hub fans is make sure that they have a core feedback loop on what makes them feel special, what motivates them. And in the end, I get to be a fan of the fans. That's so great to hear. Hub Fan sounds like such a great program, way to make learning so much more dynamic, especially as we enter or continue through this virtual age. Um, I see a lot of brands making uh, pages to connect with their audiences a bit more uh, from taking the community off the website into different social media pages. But sounds like you were taking the HubSpot community to HubSpot world, which is uh, always so great to see. Absolutely. We, we love our customers and partners. And so we, we want to make sure that they feel that. And I, I'm sure they are. I mean, I, I'm, I'm feeling the love with HubSpot right now, just seeing that uh, everyone can become a HubSpot fan and uh, all the brand equity you're, you're getting from that is really incredible to, to hear and, and see and learn about. Now, continuing on the theme of community, I wanted to touch on the impact you've made on marketing Twitter, which I'm sure many of us know. Uh, one of your biggest uh, contributions is your weekly Tuesday, the unconference Twitter spaces, which seem to have only grown in popularity. Uh, what led you to extend the marketing Twitter community using social audio? And do you have any tips for marketers looking to get started or even brands looking to get started? Absolutely. So January of this year, I'm sure there's a thread. I'm sure you can find the thread. I can see if I can find it too. Um, I realized what I wanted in a conference. We'd all, we'd all kind of been talking and making new friends and making a lot of new connections across Twitter. Um, and I basically said to the effect of like, I really want a conference and I just want us all to like rent out a hotel with a bar and we just take the whole place over and we just hang out and get to know each other and talk shop and, and all the things. And really kind of remove all the formalities and just kind of make it more human again, which is really very much an unconference. And so I had a lot of, it, it, it did numbers as we would say. And so I actually did a thread where I broke down, like, what would my dream conference be? What would that look like? And I broke down, like, what would the speaker experience be like? Where would it be located? What would we be doing? All these things. And I actually had some like fortune 500 companies reach out to me to be like, if you do this, I want to sponsor this, like, let me know. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and then I joined HubSpot soon after. And I was like, I can't do this, but I want to do this. I want us to find like a cool way for us to learn from each other and it to feel casual and to no one, like no one gets to be the expert because we all have something to learn from each other. And so you can have some subject matter experts come in, 
but everyone kind of gets the opportunity to speak, share their own experience and really have an opportunity just for an hour. And sometimes it goes over to really learn because I'm, I'm curious to a fault. And so I, I find that if you come from a place of, I can always learn, like your ego will drop. You'll, you'll open a lot more doors for yourself. You'll, you'll be able to understand that there's so much more that's, that's available to you. If you just realize you don't know it all. And so I thought, how can I do this in an easy way that's accessible to anybody? What does that look like? And so I was like, I'll do spaces. So when I got access to it, I really thought about it and I was like, well, what would this look like? And I always joke that I'm not verified on Twitter. And I know a lot of people have asked me, like, I've like tagged Twitter to like, you need to verify her. Like it's enough. I haven't applied because it's kind of feels on brand to me now. And I was like, I like small creators and small creators don't get verified. So like, why would I leave them behind and go get my check mark? So it's called unverified the unconference and it's called uncheck chats on Twitter as the handle. Um, we do it every Tuesday at six o'clock. We, we stopped um, this week and for the rest of the year because we are all slammed. We are all busy. And I don't want to take something joyous and turn it into something else that's on a to-do list. I don't ever want to be on someone's to-do list. I don't want everyone to feel like, okay, I got to check that box. She's done. So um, when things come back to normal in January and we're all kind of raring up to go again and we've got our rest, then we'll, we'll start again. But every week it's a different, it's a different um, topic. And sometimes they're speakers. Sometimes it's like an open forum and we're all there to kind of listen to each other and talk and some have been fun. It's been like marketing and Marvel and others have been NFTs and the Facebook papers. And we talked about the scandal. I mean, it's, it's a little bit of everything, but it's, and these marketers need something raw that they can feel like they can jump into, that they can learn, they can engage if they want to be a part of the conversation, but they know that they can leave and have something valuable. Cause I find that we're so busy doing our own work that we know what's happening, but we're not in those conversations a lot of times because we just don't have the time. And so it's a really great opportunity for us to learn from each other, join that conversation. And, and in my opinion, like all of us skill up. Yeah, I totally agree. I feel like social audio has really done that for everyone. Um, mm -hmm. You know, here's a topic, everyone jump in, you know, give your mm -hmm. take and everyone walks away learning something. Uh, and of course we have some amazing marketers on social media who, uh, have a very long and very insightful uh, Twitter threads uh, breaking down everything that's discussed, which is always incredibly helpful. Um, and I, I did see that, that tweet, everyone, let's go to a bar, let's, let's talk a little bit. I've seen so many tweets from marketers who are finding houses in their towns that they want to buy and, and house just a group of marketers. Mm -hmm. And I'm still waiting on that opportunity, if I'm going to be quite honest. Uh, but thank you so much, Christina. So now I'm going to open it up uh, to our audience. If you have a question, um, unmute yourself. And I think we have uh, enough time for at least two questions tonight. OK, go ahead, John. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Christina, thank you for the talk. Um, I was just wondering, I was listening to what you were talking about earlier in terms of building the community and managing it. I was wondering if um, uh, the folks there have been influenced at all by uh, Amy Jo Kim and the series of books that she's written over the years. I can't speak for the rest of the team. Um, a lot of what I do for community building is I've used um, the community canvas is really foundational. And then I do a lot of work with community club. I'm a part of their mentor program. And so also um, Lolita, um, Lolita Tob does a lot of fantastic stuff. She actually has a notion with over 400 resources, but I can't, I can't speak for the rest of the team. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. That feels like it's a non-answer, but no, no, no. I, I, just, for them. I just, just wanted to. Okay, do we have anyone else? Okay, Bob, go ahead. Hey, Pat, thanks. Um, hey, Christina, how are you? Awesome Hello. talk, excited um, that you were able to join us tonight. The HubSpot blog, I've been reading it and sharing HubSpot blogs content forever, it seems like on Twitter and elsewhere on social media. I think it's one of the best, if not the best blogs um, on marketing out there. How do they, because I don't think, that's part of your job, but but do you see how they do it and and create such 
timely, relevant, um, long form content day in and day out? And is it not the most read blog on marketing and inbound and social ever out there? What's your take on, on the HubSpot blog? Yeah. Um, it's not my remit, um, but I work with a lot of the team there and I'm actually working on a, on a blog for community on about community for the blog team. Um, I would say they're just the most empathetic marketers you'll ever meet. And I feel like that's why it feels like it resonates. And it's so timely is because they really take a holistic view to make sure that they understand like what are the biggest issues that are facing marketers? What questions are being asked? How can we be helpful? And then they're also making a point to do historical updates. So historical SEO, it's not only to improve those past blogs, but more importantly, to make sure that that content is always timely because you don't know when someone's going to be reading a blog from a year ago. It still needs to be helpful, still needs to be valuable for you. So um, I can't speak to their, to their full process. What I can say is that they're incredibly empathetic. They make sure that they're paying attention and they understand that they need to keep your attention. So when they're creating long form content, they're making sure that they keep that in mind and are coming from a place of, would I read all of this or where would I stop? Like, where would I be like, all right, that's enough. So it's, it's just very, I, I would say that a lot of the people that I work with at HubSpot, if I had to describe them, it's, it's just very thoughtful. Like their work is extremely thoughtful. I agree. It, and, and thanks for that answer, Christina. Absolutely. Okay, I think we have time for one more. Do we have anyone else? Okay, uh, thank you so much, Christina. We're gonna head out into some breakout rooms. Just give me uh, at least two minutes to split everyone up. And uh, once again, uh, thank you all for attending. If you need to pop out, uh, no worries. Uh, this will be recorded uh, and is being recorded and will be on YouTube uh, probably by the beginning of next week, so. Prepare to be split up into some groups.